Here we are for another classic related rates problem. This one is the rate at which volume and radii, or radius I guess, of a sphere is changing. Very classic problem. A spherical balloon is losing air at a rate of four centimeters cubed per minute. Okay, so sphere, that's the part that's gonna elicit, okay, there's a certain kind of formula we gotta go after here. We've got centimeters cubed per minute, so if you happen to notice that it was dvdt, great. If not, no sweat. What is the rate at which the radius of the balloon, so rate of radius, dr dt, is decreasing when its diameter is 22 centimeters? Okay, so first things first, dv, meaning the change in volume as time changes. If you didn't notice either of these, no sweat. Here's what I want you to be able to do. We should notice based on the units, centimeters cubed per minute, that we are talking about volume volume of a sphere. And if your professor or teacher requires you to memorize the formula, fine. But on the A, B, or B, C exams, they're not going to have you memorize these formulas. They'll tell you that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we know it's volume again due to the units, cubic centimeters, and then they talk about the radius, right, and a sphere. Now, from here, I look both ways and think, can I differentiate that relatively easily with respect to time? And the answer is yes. Right? There's no product rule, no quotient rule, nothing crazy. And let's take a derivative and let's see what we get. The derivative of v with respect to time is dv dt, or dvdta. The derivative of all this, 4 thirds pi is just chilling. That's one big coefficient. So you're really focused on the derivative of r cubed, which is 3 times r squared, don't forget about the chain rule there, times dr dt, or r prime of t. Right there you have it. Remember, r is with respect to time. Now, what we do is we take a look at our variables and see what we can plug in for and what we can't. Well, dv dt is 4. So if we didn't know that was dv dt, now we know to look for it, and it's 4 centimeters cubed per minute. So dv dt, or v prime of t, is going to be equal to 4 centimeters cubed per minute. All right, so we have that. Now, that's going to be negative because we are losing air. Be careful with that. Now, the radius is what we're going to need. We don't have the radius. And this is one occasion where you look back at the word problem and say, fine, can I figure out what the radius is? And the answer is yes. If the diameter is 22, the radius is half of the diameter. 22 divided by 2 is 11, and that'd be 11 centimeters. Sweet. So that's an occasion there where the problem is telling you, all right, I need R, don't have it, but I could find it, and we did get it. Finally, what we have is dr dt, and we don't know what that is. It's not in the problem, which is fine because it's asking us for what is the rate at which the radius of the balloon is decreasing, which is cool that we don't have it. So let's go and find it. So now we just plug in everything. This is the easy part. Negative 4 is equal to the 3s are going to cancel. So you'd be left with 4 pi times the radius is 11 squared times dr dt. And we're solving for dr dt. So we'll get negative 4. The 4 is going to come under there. It's actually going to be not such a bad number. Not so bad. 4 pi, 11 squared is 121. And that's equal to dr dt. And so the 4s will divide out. You get negative 1 all over 121 pi. Now, what are the units? Well, let's think about this. The radius is measured in centimeters. So it's a change in centimeters per a change in time. And the time is in minutes. So it'd be centimeters per minute. Just make sure you always account for those units. Now, on the A, B, or B, C exams, I would actually not simplify anything, so my answer would be negative 4 over all of this, not even squaring out the 11, but I would have correct units. That's it. So that's a classic sphere problem. Always, again, make sure to look both ways after you've got your equation and take a derivative with respect to time, and then see what pieces of information we can replace these variables with. Anything that's not replaceable, see if we can calculate it from the problem, and then there's always going to be the one variable that you're trying to find, which is fine that we don't have information about DRDT in this case in the problem. All right, y'all, classic problem, not a bad one. We'll see another one that's super involved, but one that you'll be rocking in no time in cones in the next video after this. Peace.